we're going to talk about cameras which are used to capture images of distant objects and record them. The first cameras actually had a very different uh, pattern than what we are used to seeing today. They are known as pinhole cameras or sometimes called camera obscura. What's the goal of a camera? Well, a goal of a camera is to capture an image. An object is reflecting light off the, from, a, from the sun or other light sources in all different directions. So in this picture, uh, the, the gentleman here has light rays reflecting off of his pipe and off of his jacket in multiple directions. And our goal is to take those light rays and capture it to make an image on a piece of paper. Of course, those light rays that are coming off this gentleman are coming off and reflecting diffusely. That is, that they're reflecting in all different directions. And the drawing shows a collection of light rays coming off of two spots and heading in all different directions. And of course, now they start overlapping when they start to get uh, to the paper. So there's going to be confusion because some of the rays from his coat are overlapping with the rays from the pipe. And so it's hard to come up to with a single spot on a piece of paper and say, oh yes, that's the collection of light that came from his pipe, or oh yes, that's the light collection of rays from his jacket, because all those rays now overlap. It just looks like white noise. Ideally, what you would have is on the piece of paper, all the coat rays would hit one part of the screen, all the pipe rays would hit another part of the screen, all the rays from his shoes would hit another part of the screen, and so on. That's what you would have when you have a proper image. Well, the first cameras that were ever made achieved that goal by simply putting a small pinhole in a barrier. So in this graphic, you imagine the object, the man, standing in front of a barrier, and the barrier has one tiny pinhole in it. Any light that wants to get over here to the far right, where the screen is, has to pass through that hole. And as you can see, the light from his jacket is going to pass through the hole, keep going in a straight line, and end up on a, sp a certain spot on the screen. The light from his pipe is going to pass through that hole and end up in another little spot on the screen. That actually does make an image. So a pinhole was the first type of, uh, of camera to ever be made. So the light getting our, to our projection screen, in this case, has to pass through the hole. And the light coming from his pipe goes to a distinct place on the screen from the light coming uh, from his jacket. What happens then is an image that's inverted is formed on the screen. And this graphic here, this photograph, actually was taken using a pinhole camera and a piece of film that shows a farmhouse and a fence. And all that was needed was a pinhole in a wall or in a box and a piece of film on the other end of the box. If the hole in the, in the wall is a little bit too big, then that causes some confusion too because now there are several light rays that can pass through the hole and get to the screen. And so you get something that is somewhat blurred out because the pipe can the rays from the pipe end up at several different places on the screen. Likewise, the rays from the coat end up at several different places from the screen. Said another way, several angles of light rays can get through the pinhole. Each of these will hit at different locations and the image will be blurred as a result. So here's that same farmhouse viewed with a pinhole camera where the hole is just a little bit too large. You can still make out that it's a farmhouse, you can still make out the fence, but a lot of features are blurred. I tried to make my own pinhole camera. I took my uh, digital SLR and instead of having a lens on it, I tried putting a little pinhole cover. And I took an exposure that lasted one second here at home. It looks mostly dark, unfortunately, and not a lot of light got through. Because it is, after all, only a small pinhole. You can see a couple spots of light at the top of the picture. Those are actually some lights in my house. So I decided to let the picture go for a little bit longer. Here's that same photograph, but now exposed for four seconds. And now some other lights getting through the pinhole, uh, but it's still kind of hard to tell what this picture is. Then I tried a 16 second exposure. Now you can start to see some features of the room. Uh, there's some various sources of light in the background but still, it's pretty darn dark. Then I went with a 30 second exposure. So after 30 seconds of light go through that pinhole, there was finally enough to illuminate the CCD in my, in my camera and give us a picture of what was going on. So this is actually my kitchen. You can see the stove, you can see some fruit on the counter, you can see a, 
a, a mixer, you can see a teapot, all those things are showing up. And the original two sources of light were actually a couple of lamps uh, underneath the stove. But it took 30 seconds of collecting light. So indeed, that pinhole does take a lot of time. Then I tried just taking a picture with my regular camera with a lens on it. And that same picture I could take with an exposure of just 1 30th of a second. So one big advantage of the camera that we're used to, the one that has lenses, is that it seems to collect light really quickly compared to that pinhole camera. The pinhole camera works just fine. It makes an image, but it takes a long time for enough light to be collected.